anything to it. The loop, however, let's listen to the loop. As you can hear, there's a low frequency there. What I'm using is a high pass filter. Um, the Waves Q1 is great for this. Um, it's versatile, and I generally find it works better than actually using sort of like a high pass filter from a program like Contact or whatever. Oh, pardon me. Um, I'm starting to roll it off at 336 hertz. Let's listen to it without first. And now with. Hear the difference. Now that low frequency is going to collide with our kick. Now one thing that we don't want is to take any punch away from our wonderful kick that we've just created. So I'm going to turn this on. Doesn't interfere with the kick whatsoever. So that's our drum sounding good now. Now let's listen to our bass, because I weren't happy with the bass the way it sounds. Let's just listen to the bass, and you tell me what you think. Well, I won't be able to hear what you think, so... Now as you can hear, that's a little bit weak. It's a bass guitar, but it sounds a little bit weak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plug-in, Da Tube, just to warm it up. It's supposed to be a tube emulation. Kind of works, not really. I'd rather the real thing, to be honest. Um, but as we all know, they cost thousands. But it adds that little bit of warmth there. I'm not using it too much. That can sound quite good. But the problem is, you drive it too much, you take a, you're adding so many more harmonics that you're actually clouding the fundamental, which means that it's, it's going to be harder to get a more solid bass. So be careful how you use uh, tube emulators. What I've also done is I've EQ'd a li little bit just to add the mid, and also I'm sending it via an aux send to uh, distortion effects on my effects channel. So let's listen to this. Here it is coming through here. Okay. Let's bring this up, and I'm using the program called Quadrifuzz. There it is. Now I've got it turned on. Hear the difference there? Growls a little bit now. You can hear the growling. So now let's listen to that in the mix. Sounds good, let's do Already. Now, as you can see, we're going up to about minus two, minus one decibels. That's okay, that's not a problem. Let's meet, that's sounding okay. Sound a lot punchy and a lot more heavy than it did um, about five minutes ago. So that's our mix down stage. We've got a good mix down track now. What we could do is we could export that as a WAV file and mastering it, master it in Sadie, WaveLab, uh, T-Rex, uh, TC Finalizer, whatever's your preference. Um, reason. Uh, but what we've got here is uh, what I've got here is a compressor um, on this channel here, and I'm using this compressor just to give a little bit of a bounce. And as you can see, it's just reducing it by around about 2 decibels occasionally every single time it snaps. Um, you can do this by positioning the threshold and then altering the attack and release time to one of the most relevant things to get the track that you're working with. So there's my compressor. That's without it. That's with it. Sounds very, very slightly a little bit better. And that's what you want. Let's go to EQ. What I've done here is I've added a little bit of brightness. And that's brightened things up a little bit. And the final stage is the Waves L2. Now let's listen to this. That is our limiter. The limiter is the thing that stops it going over the threshold. It will, If that's the output um, ceiling, that's what you're boosting it up to. The threshold is no sound will go over that threshold. Anything that does will be reduced. This is the final output. When it gets reduced, we can turn it all up. Now let's listen if I over extremitize this. You can hear it's very pumpy. If I move the release down, it becomes distorted. Now when you 
chosen limiter, you've got to find a place that suits the track and the speed. Now the way I do this is I reduce the threshold till I hear it sound pumpy. <laughs> And what I do is I time, I, by altering the release, I time the pump um, in tempo with the actual speed, the BPM of the track, just by using my ears. It's kind of like DJing. When you're mixing two tracks together, you've got to try to get them on beat. What I'm doing here is by using the release, I'm getting the pump on beat with the track. Then once I've got the pump on, treat, on beat with the track, I then reduce the again. So I'm not reducing it too much. Out. That's weird. And that is how you mix down a track and make it sound a lot better than it initially did. That's how you make a good track sound like a very good track. So let's listen to the finished article if you want to. I'm sure you're bored of it as much as I am. Thank you very much.